and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and I work in all sorts of mediums. And today I'll be working on some very simple coloring of kitty images in both watercolors and in alcohol markers. And if you would like to color these up yourself so simply, you're welcome to do that. There's going to be links in the doobly-doo to the images. But first, before we get started, I want to say Happy Mother's Day. Whether you are a mother, whether you were a mother, or whether you're just the daughter of a mother, which is the case in my world, I just want to wish you a Happy Mother's Day. And I am extra happy this Mother's Day because you might remember... Back in March, we had a huge scare with my mom that we were not going to have her around for another Mother's Day. And I can tell you right now, she is kicking butt and taking names. My mom has such strength and I only hope to be like her when I'm 94. My mom is also an artist. And while I was visiting her in March and April, she gave me some advice, some art advice. I wanted to know what she thought I should do. And I've been trying to honor that while she's still here. So she can give me advice on what I'm doing. One of my students was kind enough to gift me a watercolor portrait class because my mom wanted me to work on portraits. I have not been feeling confident of myself in portraits, but in this class, I've done some work that is not bad. So I will share some of that with you at the end of the video. And I'm also going to share a controversy Yes, there is a controversy in my art world about a dog portrait. I painted this one and I have some changes I'm considering making to it that I will talk about at the end of the video as well. But we're going to start on kitties in the first portion. So let us begin, shall we? This whole adventure actually goes back to October of 2023. During Inktober, I actually ended up drawing both of these cats for Inktober during that month. And while I've sold the originals, they're gone now. I did scan them before I got rid of them so that I could put them in the shop as downloadables because I had a number of requests for them. And did I do that right away? No, it is now what is this, May of 2024? So months and months have gone by. My apologies for taking too long. But one of the reasons I wanted to put a little more thought into it was because these images don't necessarily have a way for the outside edges to end, especially this this kitty, which is called the Who Me Kitty. I had a glow around the original cat, like the cat was in the light, and I wanted to make sure I had that glow so I didn't put any outlines around the outside edges. So how do you color that when there's nowhere for it to end? And part of it would depend on what color the cat is. But if there's a white glow around the cat, even on a cat that has gray or brown fur, how do you render that? And I wanted to do that in watercolor because it's super easy to do in watercolor. But in order to do it on watercolor paper, with watercolor, I had to transfer the image. So I had to basically trace it because my printer doesn't print with waterproof ink, nor does it print on heavy watercolor paper, it won't suck it in. So I was kind of stuck having to redraw. But when I redrew it, I was leaving more open areas, a little more air space in between lines so that more of the color could show through. And I realized that maybe when I upload the image, I should upload both images so you can have a choice whether you want something that's more dense and has more contrast, or something that's a little more open and airy. So if you get one of these, the Who Me Kitty is this one. The other one is called Angel Kitty. And both of them are available in both the lighter and the darker renderings. So you can let me know which one works better for you as a colorist, like what exactly is going to suit you so that I kind of know for the future how to work some of these things because I want to make what's going to work for you. So with each one of them, I just followed the original drawing, traced it, and opened up some more areas, opened up some more space to just let more color come through instead of it being all blackish. You can see the differences between, this is the watercolor that has a little more air, a little more open space in between lines, and this one that has just more of the closed up lines because it was shrunk down from a larger drawing. But they'll both be there at a large size so you can 
print them out large if you want to. Now my last video, I did this drawing and it's also on the website right now. And it's flowers that I drew for my mom. If you would like to get that one for free, you can get it right now with $50 purchase or you can just buy it by itself. So I'm gonna link all of the new printables in the doobly-doo down below. I'm water and coloring this using my sketch palette with the essentials from Daniel Smith on the two outside edges, warm on the left, cool on the right, a couple of other colors in the middle. I'll list them all in the doobly-doo and on the blog if you wanna know what colors are in that palette. But I started out by just painting water on top of the watercolor version. This is on the watercolor paper, just painting water across the whole face and just kind of going out to the edges, leaving the water out there. And then I started by mixing just whatever was left. You know, there's a whole lot of mess in the palette and just let all the water make all that color into a brownish color. Wanted it a little warmer, so I put some red in, rinse my brush, put in a little bit of a warm yellow, trying to see if I could make a color that was gonna make me happy, dropped in a little bit of blue. When you mix red, yellow, and blue, they make a neutral of some kind. It's just a neutral that sometimes goes more toward red if you have more red in it. it, goes more toward yellow if you have more yellow. If you want something more gray, you need to tone it down with some blue. So I wanted to tone this down and make it much more of a grayish color to drop into the browns. And literally I'm just dropping color in around the nose because the nose I wanna make pink. You know, you can make it whatever color your cat's nose is and then drop in the color and let it run into where the water is. I'm using a thin wash to go over the body and the little feetsies and the tail, and that's really all you have to do for water coloring this. Keep an eye on where the water and the, the paint travel, because if you end up with too much that goes out to the edges, you'll end up with a hard edge around the outside, but you can just take a baby wipe and dab some of that off, and you'll get a really soft blend, because really, you just want the focus on that face, that wonderful yummy face. Now, if you want darker color, just mix more pigment. So I took more red, more blue, more yellow to make a thicker mix of brown to get a richer color. And it's all dependent on what kind of thing you wanna do. You can use your brush to move color around a little bit, just kind of pull it around the images. I'm using a little more of a grayish color. It's mixed more with blue and you know, that's really all it takes to watercolor it. You're just splooging some color in there so it feels like it has something. Now I'm using leftover color that's just in the paint well and watered it way down so I could have something really soft. I didn't want a whole lot of super dense color in this one. And you can see how easy that is. I'm not following any lines. I'm not looking for any fur spots. I'm just throwing some color in. And all those lines are already there. All that fur is already painted or drawn in with the lines. So the painting is really easy. If you have a printer that you can watercolor on without the color smooching, then you can print that right out. Otherwise you're like me, you're gonna have to trace it. <laughs> and you know, that's not nearly as fun as just printing it out. So I've mixed up some green using my cobalt teal blue and a little bit of yellow so that they can have nice green eyes. I mixed up a bit of the quinacridone rose for the noses and dabbed some off because it got too bloody red. <laughs> that would be a little weird. And painted a shadow then under the cat that's sitting on the ground because there's some lines from the shadow that are there. Dabbed up the edges with a baby wipe to soften them out. And that's it. That's all it takes. It's not very much. Now for alcohol markers, or if you're gonna use pencils or something, pencils be really easy to get a soft blend out to the outside, but alcohol markers, I'm literally just putting color in some of these interior areas with a cream color. I'm not even using a lot of color. I would recommend going lighter first before you see how it looks, because it's real easy to get overly dark with these. Now, the ones I'm coloring on right now are the darker version. It's the version number one of both of these. So you're seeing a lot of that contrast because of it. And if you have a cat that has a lot more black in it, you might wanna use the one that's darker and just use a lot of heavy to mid-tone grays. This one is about a 30% gray. So I'm mixing that with a little bit of that cream color 
and it just looks very natural. It's like super quick, super easy coloring. You can spend all your time designing the card and not as much on trying to figure out how to color this. If it was just an outline around the outside edge, sure, you could have fun with the fur, but I know some people don't like to have fun drawing the fur. So it's a lot easier to just have those lines drawn in for you already. But notice I'm not going out into the white areas on this cat. I'm just kind of letting it go. A little pink in the nose, a little green in the eyes. And the coloring job here is finished. It's like super, super simple. So this is the comparison of the two. They kind of have the same feel to them. Very light, very loose color, not real heavy or anything like that. So they're real easy to do. If the cat that you want to paint has more white fur in it, you can always use gouache. Just do all the coloring first and then over top of it you can add a bunch of white fur. This is from the real-time watercolor painting that just went up at Patreon for my $10 and up patrons. And they get a new one every month and this time you get to learn how to paint the whole cat, the whole background, the whole nine yards, including all the yummy fur. And we'll talk about how to make that fur look nice and realistic. I said at the beginning of this video, I was going to ask your opinion on the dog painting. Let me first show you the reference and you can scroll back to this if you want to compare the painting to this. I wasn't trying to replicate it exactly because there were some things I didn't like. It's too blue to me. It's just too much blue. And this is the second version of the painting. And this is the one that I, I want to maybe make some shifts to but I don't want to do it yet until I really think about it. I like the focus that's on the dog. I like the lightened background a bit. I, I just, there's a whole lot I like color-wise about it that's much tamer. This is the first version. And oh my gosh, I mean, it feels like a sketch compared to the other one because I had some technique things that I was playing with and the background just was a death by a thousand strokes. It was, I kept trying to darken it because I was playing with the value of the head versus the value of the background. This is one of those reasons why you should sketch something first. I should have done this smaller instead of jump right into the larger painting, but okay, so I have a large sketch for this painting instead. But I would love to know what you think. Should I add more color to the background? Does it need that? Or is, is the focus nice on it because we've got that I don't know, that lighter background in the background. Also, do I need to darken the head? I want to do that because the photograph kind of tells me the head is a little darker, but I'm worried it's going to conflict with the value in the background. And given that I have two opinions from excellent artists, I feel like I can't decide. So in version two, do I darken the head? Do I darken the background or do I just leave it alone? Because it could be dangerous to touch it at this point. So what do you think? Let me know in a comment. So now that class, thank you to Candy again for just being so sweet and signing me up for a watercolor portraits class. This one was weird. It had a strange light coming across the girl's face, but I like the looseness of it. I don't know that loose is going to be my style for portraits. You know, there were ones where they said, hey, just start splashing things. And I'm like, oh, okay. It just feels like his hat's dripping. Uh, this one felt very much like me. They used a lot of gouache. The teacher used a lot of gouache in the beard, but I just used value, a, a you know dark gray within a black in there to try to, to create that beard texture. And that feels more like me. This one was just way overworked. God bless this poor woman. She's actually much more beautiful than that. I struggled with the colors here. Uh, this guy had more wrinkles. I opted to lose a couple of the wrinkles because I just was worried about getting overly fussy with things. This girl had a strange shadow again coming down across her and then her eye just disappeared into the shadow and I wasn't sure how to handle that. The teacher just kind of blocked it out and it just looks weird to me. This one was fun even though it's kind of crazy. He had a pencil in his ear and it was just a matter of letting colors mix and doing negative painting. And you know me and negative painting, we get along really well so I might do more in that vein. This one took me four tries because it was so crazy. Like the hands are still really bad, but I don't know. I, I was at least willing to move on after four tries. And this one came out really well. That was one of my most recent ones. And I was pretty pleased with that. So in general, I am happy with how the class is going, even if I'm not going to hit 
the entire thing in 30 days. It's just not going to happen. But uh, yeah, I'm making progress. All right. I will talk to you guys later. Links for stuff are in the doobly-doo. Go get the kitties and let me know which one you prefer to color. And I'll see you again in my next video. Ta-ta for now. Go create something every day. See ya. <laughs>